Over one terrifying summer month in 1985, fear spread throughout the state of South Carolina following the abduction of two girls in broad daylight in front of their respective homes. Their abductor and killer, Larry Jim Bell, then traumatized his first victim's family through a series of taunting phone calls, even providing directions to the locations of both girls' bodies. Bell ultimately sealed his fate by forcing his first victim write her own last will and testament, by which the FBI were able to trace him. This is the chilling story of Larry Jean Bell. Larry Jean Bell was born on Oct. 30, 1949 in Ralph, Alabama, moving around the South frequently and training as an electrician. Settling into married life in Rock Hill, South Carolina in 1972, he was divorced by 1976. During the 1970s, Bell tried to kidnap at least three women, using a knife and a starter gun, but served a three-year sentence prison for only one of these attacks. On Friday, May 31, 1985, 17-year-old Shari Faye Smith of Lexington, South Carolina, was looking forward to singing the national anthem at her high school graduation that Sunday. Smith and her boyfriend stopped off at a shopping center that afternoon, then Smith drove home alone, completely unaware of the car trailing in her rearview mirror. As Smith reached home, she did what she always did, and stopped at the mailbox at the bottom of the drive. Along the straight drive about 100 yards away, Smith's father Bob, saw his daughter's car from his home office situated at the front of the house, according to Inquisitor. And he found it strange that she hadn't pulled up to the house yet. Bob Smith rolled down the driveway, seeing the mail on the ground, and Sherry's car still running with the driver's door open but she was nowhere to be seen. Her purse was still on the front seat containing her important diabetes medication. As fear and confusion gripped the Smith family, over a potential kidnapping, the county sheriff and FBI organized a huge search effort, with a 24-hour command center set up near the Smith's house. Two days later, Bell called the Smith's, but it wasn't a ransom demand it was for his own sadistic satisfaction. Distorting his voice, Bell taunted the Smiths with his description of Sherry's abduction, saying she had, the fear of God in her. In the meantime, Bell wanted to know if the family had received the letter he had sent, and investigators rushed out to the post office early to intercept the envelope. Bell, however, was just toying with the Smiths, giving them false hope that their child was still alive. What Bell had sent the family was a handwritten letter dated June 1, 1985, and heartbreakingly titled, Last Will and Testament. Over two pages Sherry Smith bravely tells her family not to let her death ruin their lives. I love you all so damn much, sorry, dad, I had to cuss for once. Jesus forgave me. Enjoying the sense of control he exerted over the family, especially the Smith women, Bell made eight telephone calls, with seven being recorded, but a trace took around 15 minutes at that time. Bell would initially ask for Sherry's mother, Hilda, until starting to enjoy his talks with Sherry's older sister, Don, who bore a striking resemblance to Sherry. Bell even let it slip that Don may have been his original target, not Sherry, when he accidentally said, all I wanted to do was make love with Don. Bell called again with the chilling news that he and Sherry were now, one soul, describing Sherry's death to her sister by telling her how he had wrapped duct tape all the way around her head, suffocating her. In another call, Bell disturbingly gave precise directions to the location of Sherry's body, saying, listen carefully, before ending his call with, we're waiting. God chose us. 